<laughs> just take it pleasure. Not an abstract, oh, let's just be happy and joyful. What's that? It's just a third party, third person gift. Some mood that we're in. That's not what we're talking about. I'm just talking about joy. Joy is not a destination, it's a way of life. I also see sign out here I also see articles, joy is a choice. Right. <laughs> three years ago, I was brain dead and assaulted by, depressed by demons to such an extent that I was at the gates of hell. I know what it feels like. You cannot pull yourself out of it. I know what it's like to be so attacked that you are absolutely 100% dependent on the total grace of God. Paul said that in 2 Corinthians. He said, I don't want you to be unaware of what I went through in Asia. I despaired even of life. It was so tough. It was so ridiculous. I just, we thought we were dying. But he says this happens so that we might learn to trust God in raising the dead. How many of you want faith to raise the dead? Well, God has his ways of getting you to be dependent enough on him. James says, count it all joy when you encounter various trials because you're developing perseverance, which is making you perfect, complete, like nothing. How many of you want to be perfect, complete, like nothing? our focus that we stop trying to get our pleasure from other things besides God. Most of the time we don't take pleasure in God. We take pleasure in our families and activities and our stuff. And we go to God only when we need something. No joy in Him. We just go to Him and try to get something. Church is not that fun, but we need to go because otherwise we get fried in hell. Yeah. Yeah. 
then you can lose Irish and pay for It's taken a long time, it's a gradual thing to learn all of it, year by year. Anybody that thinks you can just be sanctified overnight is, ah. Mature are those who learn by experience to distinguish good from evil. And we live a lifetime of dealing with evil opposition to learn how to love and to demonstrate the difference and find out the difference and appreciate the difference. It's not just to have heaven right away, because heaven only wants to give it to you. Learning to glorify God and enjoy Him and take pleasure in Him and satisfy the reason for which He made you. And so, real lasting joy that stays with you after a meeting. Well, maybe not the excessive stuff. But, uh, Thank you. 
hands in the air. And lots of these things are just plain bad theology. A lot of people say theology doesn't matter. I just want Jesus. But what you think about Jesus in the relationship is entirely shaped by what you think about Your theology, everybody has theology if you don't like it. Whatever you think about Jesus is your theology. You don't have one. And it's impossible for a lot of people to enjoy God and take pleasure in Him very much because of the rotten theology. Like, for example, what's the beginning of wisdom? Fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11 says about Jesus, he delights in the fear of the Lord. And if you think that's just Old Testament, we don't need the fear of the Lord anymore, you have bad theology. You're not going to be able to take pleasure in God. Because the fear of the Lord brings you to Jesus and keeps you in that perfect center of his heart where there is no fear. And you don't want to leave that spot because you have the fear of the Lord and you know there will be consequences if you leave. There's consequences. That's good for you. There's consequences for individuals cities and states and countries in the world. If you don't think God is a judge anymore, you have bad theology. And you're not going to be able to take it away from God. Because you're going to have, you're going to have a God that just lets evil go and doesn't care about what happens. And, and <laughs> a lot of people think, oh, I'm done with the God of the Old Testament and all that judgment. <laughs> Listen to Jesus in the New Testament. You ever listen to all his woes? Woe to you! <laughs> Scribes and Pharisees, you snakes. <laughs> Woe to you! Compared to it's going to be easier on Sodom and Gomorrah than they had judgment than for you. <laughs> Jesus said, Don't be afraid of people who just kill the body. I'll tell you who to be afraid of. And we can put you in hell. <laughs> Jesus is the king and the judge. And I take pleasure in a God who has that kind of total, sovereign, authoritative power. To take, take vengeance on his enemies. It's not for me to do that. Sits on the throne, bow down before him, worship, worthy is the man, and slain. He's also the most gentle, humble, forgiving, gracious, loving, humble person in the universe. Change God's will. You have a bad theology. I've tried, but I can't improve on this will. He knows the desires of my heart better than I do. Do you know best what to do with the rest of your life? Do you know what's going to satisfy you? Do you know what's going to make you the happiest? I used to think so. I had this question to become a tech. I was going to be a scientist. I had to I was going to have any company I wanted to work for. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to work on the first station of Mars. Except the country's broke. I got on Facebook recently. 
which means see what happened to those girls. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spell disaster? Wildfire. 